What's crack? Big dogs. Welcome. Bike to the channel. Welcome. Bike to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDG Big Dogs. Got it. Beat. We're covering everything dynasty and rookie fantasy football focused from now through the end of the NFL draft into eternity. This is going to be a dynasty focused podcast, not so much a rookie focused podcast, which I've been doing uh, most of my content on. We'll be doing uh, a rookie, a full dynasty rookie mock draft on either Friday or Saturday. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you don't want to miss that. Today, we're talking about five running backs that y'all should be buying in dynasty fantasy football. Some of them are under the radar guys. Some of them are big name dudes that I think you should pay a premium price for because their value is going to skyrocket over the next three months, over the next year, maybe over the next three years. I have a very big brain. I could usually see what's going to happen three years down the line. So if you trust me, then trust these players. All right? Y'all know what we got to do. Let's tuck your shirt and stop yelling. Let's eat. Before we jump into the list, the first and most important thing that y'all can do for us, if you're listening via podcast or if you're just watching via YouTube, uh, it would tremendously help the brand out. Now we have a lot of bills to pay because we're in the office. But if you can go over to iTunes, if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify and leave us a rating and review on the podcast, I would love you forever. We're trying to get that Joe Rogan call her daddy type billion dollar deals from Spotify. Okay. Please. If you are uh, a listener, if we've given you value over the last few months or years or whatever the case may be, and you have not left a five-star rating and review on the podcast platforms, man, I love you forever. And I will love Travis Etienne forever. Jacksonville Jaguars running back who they drafted in the first round last year, erroneous pick, but nonetheless, he is on the roster and he is, I, the key point for Travis Etienne is just to remember how good this dude was in college. Now, he missed his entire rookie year because of the Liz Frank injury. He will be back with plenty of time to spare and fully recovered with this injury come 2022. OTAs, training camp, he'll have plenty of time to assimilate himself back, bike, excuse me, into the offense. The big uh, injury in this backfield outside of ETN was, of course, James Robinson, who tore his Achilles. Now, you hate to see that because James Robinson is a beast. He's a friend of the brand. He's just a great player all around, fun, wholesome-ass runner. However, Robinson's going to be facing a very, very tough uphill battle. We've got a new coaching staff. We've got, you know, someone who was not highly regarded in terms of draft capital. So a lot of uh, moving parts here with James Robinson, if he's even back for next year, because it happened late in the season. So James Robinson might not even be back until like November, December, whatever. It's going to be ETN's backfield completely. Uh, and they can't get any worse than they were last year. They have a new coaching staff. And uh, Trevor Lawrence coming into his second year. We have to remember that Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne played together at Clemson, man. And all he did was feed Etienne the ball, whether it was handing off to him or throwing him dump offs. And they drafted Etienne to make Trevor Lawrence feel more comfortable. He is going to be the outlet guy there. And they have a lot of their pass catchers who really haven't done anything. Uh, they are probably rumored to sign someone like Christian Kirk or Juju Smith-Schuster, so they will have more targets in there, but DJ Chark's out. Uh, Marvin Jones will probably be there for another year or so, but they need playmakers in this offense desperately, and Travis Etienne fits thy bill, all right? Uh, the only other running back under contract is Carlos Hyde, and nobody wants Carlos Hyde's ass outside of fucking Urban Meyer. I mean, Urban Meyer probably went, like, he got to Jacksonville, and he probably made the same trip that he did in college where he sat in his mother's living room and was like, please, please tell your son to come to Jacksonville. I need him so fucking... Urban Meyer, fuck out of here, all right? Carlos Hyde's not going to have a role in this offense unless James Robinson missed the entire year. Carlos Hyde might get, like, four carries a game or some shit. But again, please, please, please do not forget what Travis Etienne was at college. Like, you just look at these numbers as a sophomore, 1,658 yards on the ground, 1,736 total yards, 26 touchdowns as a fucking sophomore, okay? Junior year, 2,000 yards from scrimmage, 23 more touchdowns. Senior year, he explodes. 588 receiving yards, gets it done in all facets of the game. And another six, just, the guy just, listen, he is a three-down playmaker. 5'10", 215. Don't forget how good of an athlete this guy is. And now with first-round draft capital, uh, that's just something that's sticky. That's just something that we know is going to 
uh, equate to a big workload. Four five zero adjusted forty time with that two hundred fifteen pound size. Player comparable to DeAndre Swift. I definitely see it, and I would say Travis Etienne might be a little bit more explosive, to be honest with you. Um, so don't forget how good this guy was in college because of the injury. What I would do if you can, uh, I would I would look around your fantasy, your dynasty leagues, and I would rattle off like if Travis Etienne was in this class, he would be pushing Brees Hall for the RB one for sure. He would be my one hundred two. Um, eh, yeah, one hundred two. I think I think he'd be above all the wide receivers. I would be looking to move anything from like the 107 to 110 up to the two. Like obviously start lower. If you got like the 203, the 202, the 201, try to send them off for ETN. Try to send off like the 202 plus some other, I don't know, fucking Corey Davis or something for Travis ETN. Some shit like that, right? I would easily do that because this guy's got the upside to be a top eight fantasy running back. And those guys are the difference makers. Those guys are the league winners in fantasy football. Those are the guys that have the upside to actually get you and win you thy championship and the hardware. So we love Travis Etienne. Trade bait, 110 to 202. I would try trading anything in that range for Travis Etienne. And we could push that a little bit further because, again, he would probably be my 102, 103 in this class. So flip it and fucking rip it. Kenny Gainwell, Philadelphia Eagles, number two on this list. Now, the backfield is a little bit messy. They obviously still have Miles Sanders. Boston Scott is a restricted free agent, so there's a very good chance that they resign him. Maybe they don't. Who knows? Jordan Howard, unrestricted free agent. Sanders will be an unrestricted free agent after 2022. And I think this lends itself to Kenny Gainwell just naturally getting a bigger workload this year. And when Kenny Gainwell came out last year, he got a lot of fucking buzz. He was almost like the Kyron Williams of this year, okay? Or the Kyron Williams of last year where he was like small, undersized. Everyone's like playing up this athlete as if, you know, we just get excited about running backs. So we're just going to get higher and higher and higher on him. I was never really high on Kenny Gainwell, nor was I on Kyron Williams in terms of just being a pure runner. And uh, and that ended up, I feel like, playing itself out a little bit, right? He got drafted in the fifth round, so not a lot of draft capital where it lends itself to high volume. Um, but Kenny Gainwell is amazing on third downs. He is probably one of the best pass catchers that have come out of college in recent seasons. We just didn't really get to see it come to fruition this year. If Jordan Howard and or Boston Scott are out of thy picture, right, crop them out, put them in Photoshop, put Kenny Gainwell in there, and we're going to have some juicy, juicy fantasy production from Kenny Gainwell for a guy who's coming off a bad year. You want to go trade for him. And I didn't actually realize just how juicy of a role he had last year while being so fucking limited. The guy played on like 30% of snaps for the team, if that, in the games that he was actually active. He had 50 targets last year, okay? 50 targets in the regular season for Kenny Gainwell. I had no idea he had 50 targets. Now, imagine he actually has a real role. Imagine he's the 1B to Miles Sanders. That could be up to 70, 80 targets in that backfield over a 17-game season. That number, the 50 targets, does not include their playoff game where he went 5 for 49 and a touchdown through the air. You could see the role that he's going to have. It's going to be a J.D. McKissick plus role. And, you know, you might scoff at J.D. McKissick, but he has uh, been a really, really viable flex option for the last few years. And you get a running back who's playing behind Jalen Hurts, who opens up holes. Like, I I think Kenny Gainwell is a guy that you try to throw an early third round pick at um, for this year, early to mid third round pick. I don't think I would jump in. I definitely would not give up a second round pick because there's a lot of good, solid running backs you can get in this year's class. But if you can throw like the 306 or something for Kenny Gainwell or the 306 plus, you know, some other shitty backup elsewhere, some wide receiver that people pretend to like. I would go do that, right? Like flip fucking Van Jefferson for Kenny Gainwell. See what see what we can do there. All right. So um actually I don't even know if I would do that, but you get the point. I like Kenny Gainwell. Next up on this list, no surprise here, no secret, but AJ Dillon, man. Green Bay Packers are in a weird position, but they did just sign Aaron Rodgers, which tells you that whatever running back is the guy in this backfield is going to have a lot of holes and a really, really good offense with a lot of opportunities. Over the next four years or whatever the actual contract is set up to if they move him or whatever, but he's going to be there for a minute. Okay. Now, Aaron Jones got the fat contract last year. He got the Santa Claus bag. However, after 2022, after this season, right, I expect this to be a complete split still. You know, some people are going to argue AJ Dillon's the better pick. Aaron Jones, the better pick. I think they're going to be about even. We saw towards the entire end of last year, how the whole like week four through 17 last year was a complete split. It was AJ Dillon getting like 12 carries a game. Aaron Jones getting 11 carries per game. Uh, They're splitting passing down work a little bit more in favor of Jones. But when they're on the fucking goal line, it was AJ Dillon, man. So I think the roles will be very similar. And I don't see why they wouldn't because in real NFL life, that shit worked really well for them. So we might want one of them to get workhorse touches. It ain't going to happen unless one of them is gone. Now, this year, not the case. Next year, though, looking at the contract, 
If they get out from Aaron Jones at the end of next year, they save $13 million on the cap. That is huge money. I mean, he's $20 million against the cap hit uh, for the Packers if he's on the roster in 2023, which is, like, ridiculous. And I don't imagine any team paying a running back fucking $20 million unless you're Jerry Jones and you're a fucking moron. So Packers, I mean, they've done some moronic stuff, so maybe I'm just talking outlandishly here. But I don't imagine Aaron Jones being on the team in 2023. They have a really big out there. And listen, we know what A.J. Dillon is. If he gets the touches, he is a top 10 fantasy running back. That's probably his floor. So if you can if you can trade low RB1 type stuff now, knowing that he's going to be the guy, because they have Rodgers locked up too. And you think about, listen, like Demonte Adams is holding out unless they get a long-term deal done. The fact that they just paid Aaron Rodgers and they're just starting to cut some of their defensive players tells me that they are going to make room for Devontae Adams. There's no way Aaron Rodgers resigns without knowing that Adams is going to be locked up there with him for the entirety of that contract, which tells me they're going to sign Devontae Adams. They're not going to have the money to pay Devontae Adams, Aaron Rodgers, and Aaron Jones. So they're going to have A.J. Dillon on his rookie year. After this upcoming year, they're going to save $13 million by either letting go or trading Aaron Jones, which leaves the entire backfield to Dillon. So trade with the notion that it is completely Dillon's backfield next year, okay? It's going to be hard to trade for him. Obviously, there's a lot of hype. Some people might not understand the contract situation going on in the Packers backfield, which is why you take advantage of it now. So if you could trade low end RB one type trade value for AJ Dillon, you do that because come next year, he's going to be a top seven, top five fantasy running back in that bike field. All right. Next up on this list. I love Khalil Herbert, man. We stay in that NFC North, 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 North. Yes. Okay. Sometimes you guys are like fucking unforgiving, man. I could say one wrong. I'm out here fucking spitting my heart out for 30 minutes straight just no pauses no breaks on this shit straight gas mode and i say one word wrong or i forget one player's name or forget what fucking the yards per carry mark was in week eight of 2019 and i'm gonna fucking hear about it you guys are unforgiving i love it you gotta fucking hold me accountable i'm holding you accountable if your ass ain't trading for khalil herbert asap all right somebody in your league is going to get antsy in your rookie draft it's going to be like the 308 or some shit, and they're going to be like, I really fucking want fucking Wandell Robinson or Calvin Austin or one of these fucking get blown away if there's a gust of wind type ass mother front doors. That's when you pull the trigger. That's when you move the 308 or the 309 or the 310 for Khalil Herbert. I love this dude, man. Uh, Tariq Cohen, his, I mean, at this point, actually, he just got released. I was going to say his leg might as well be fucking amputated at this point, but... You know, he's, his career has just been amputated from the NFL. Montgomery, David Montgomery, just like Miles Sanders, is on the final year of his rookie deal. It's tough because Chicago definitely likes David Montgomery more than Philly likes Miles Sanders. So there's a possible re-signing there. He doesn't feel like the type of player you give a second contract to, though, like the Dalvin Cooks, the Saquon, like those guys. It just doesn't feel like he's got that immense elite upside that you actually give the second contract. Uh, fat contract too. So I think there's a good chance we see David Montgomery walk. They also did show, you know, like I think Chicago likes David Montgomery more than Philly likes Miles Sanders, but I also think that they showed more trust in Khalil Herbert last year in terms of workload than Philly showed in Kenny Gainwell. So there's a few moving parts here, man. In that four-week sample size when Herbert got the workload, you know, David Montgomery got hurt. I dropped all my fab on fucking Damian Williams like an absolute moron. And then Khalil Herbert became the guy. His four week sample size in that time was was better than most rookies get in their in their rookie season, like at all. Okay, so we look at weeks five through eight in the splits. Dude averaged over twenty two touches per game in that span. He was top five in most rushing categories: carries, yards, missed tackles, forced. All right, he's a really good player with a very tiny price attached to him, with the upside of Chicago leaning into him as their guy if they do not sign David Montgomery after this year. For me, it is a no-brainer trade target that you're trying to move a late third, early fourth for in your rookie drafts. Same thing with Eno Benjamin. He could probably be had for the same price tag. Arizona Cardinals, Eno Benjamin. I just love him as a player, man. He's got a three-down skill set that is just not talked about enough. James Conner and Chase Edmonds are both free agents this offseason. They will let one, if not both of them, walk. I think Cliff came out and already said that they're probably not going to be able to re-sign both of those guys, if not one of those guys. And he had confidence in Eno Benjamin. We've seen a very small, limited sample size of Eno, but I really like Eno coming out of college. Big time pass catcher, but he's got enough size. I think he's like 207 to uh, be a player on all three downs. And, you know, behind Kyler, I think anybody can really succeed as a running back. So I love, you know, Benjamin. And I think you could actually probably trade like a fourth rounder for him because he's shown 
uh, next to nothing in the first two years of his career. Last up on this list is Keyshawn Vaughn, man, Tampa Bay Bucks. So this is kind of like a lot of moving parts going on because Brady's bike, man. Brady made the announcement yesterday. I love that. Like, uh, so I was yesterday was Sunday. You're watching this on Tuesday, I believe. And I was out Sunday. I went to brunch, a uh, very typical brunch, had a few margaritas and I was not paying attention to like Twitter and football kind of shit. And, and my best friend, Steve is, uh, who you guys have seen a while young or whatever. He plays no fantasy football. He does not follow the NFL. He doesn't give a fuck. And he's like, yo, Brady. And I was like, what? He's like, there's no fucking way I am breaking the Tom Brady news to you right now. And I was, you know, I was in no headspace to care about football at the time, but I just thought that shit was kind of funny because he does not like people ask him all the time. You're like, yo, do you play fantasy football? Like, you know, how are your leagues going or whatever? He's like, yo, I fucking don't care about football, despite being my best friend and being a fucking creator of a football media conglomerate out here. I'm sorry. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyway, oh. when I wrote this blog post, it was not relevant to Tom Brady being there. Uh, Tom Brady had retired when I originally wrote this thing for Keyshawn Vaughn. And I was not the biggest Keyshawn Vaughn fan coming out of college. He had really good, like, size-adjusted speed. It's a bigger back, uh, explosiveness, good 40 times. So, weight-adjusted speed scores very high. And those are the type of running backs you typically want to throw darts at because, you know, all else equal, more athleticism usually ends up in more production and more results and more value in Dynasty. Vaughn is the only running back on contract this offseason. Now, this this complicates things. There was a report like last week, I think, that came out that said the Bucks were very likely to let both Lenny and Rojo test free agency, which would leave Vaughn as the guy. Obviously, the NFL draft is coming up, so there's a very good chance that they take someone in the third or fourth round that competes with Vaughn, uh, if not overtakes him, right, because he hasn't really shown much. He did show some explosion at the end of last year when he got a little bit of uh, run when those other guys were out. But there's again, I I think this is a guy that you can get probably for a pretty low price right now. I think with Brady coming back though, that definitely um, throws a wrench into things. Like he might have came back and been like, "We need all our guys back, right? You need to re-sign Leonard Fournette. You need to get Rojo back here." So this could absolutely fuck Keyshawn Vaughn's value. So I wouldn't be throwing like second round picks at Keyshawn Vaughn. I probably wouldn't even be throwing an early third round. But if you can get him for like a mid third round, late third round pick. I would try that again. I think the move is always like trying to throw a rookie pick and then a guy that you don't have a high value for in terms of like player upside, some shitty like pass catching back that, you know, will never really get into your lineup. But for some reason, people continue to try to buy guys like that. You're in and you're out. So I would try to move somebody or, you know, a mid to late third round pick for Keyshawn Vaughn and just see what happens there. Cause the upside is obviously uh, sitting there. But again, man, the raw tools are there. 215 pounds, 4 five forty. He's got the breakaway speed. So those are five guys that I think y'all should be looking to trade for in Dynasty. We have Travis Etienne. We have Kenny Gainwell. We have A.J. Dillon. We have Khalil Herbert. We have Eno Benjamin. We have Keyshawn Vaughn. That is six, not five. That's great fucking county. You get you, you got a discount. You got a discount. I gave you an extra, an extra player on this beautiful Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. What do we got going on this week? Um, office vlogs will start this week. So we're obviously in the office, and on uh, Thursdays each each a.m. we will drop a beautiful office vlog of the uh, of what's going on here behind the scenes. Uh, so that'll be a little bit of fun, as opposed to the zero fun that we usually give off in in our content and videos. So spice things up, please. Just be nice to us when we start to put those things out, because I'm insecure. Anytime you're telling people to trade for, you know, Benjamin, you probably don't have a lot of self-confidence. So I love you guys. Make sure you go leave a rating and review on the podcast platforms. Make sure you hit the button that looks like this. If you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel, if you play fantasy football at all, because we're doing a lot of dynasty rookie talk now, but in the summer, we are fucking full steam ahead when it comes to your season long leagues. All right. I love you. I'm out.